I'm hoping that this video will spare some people difficulties and frustration and potential lost time and maybe even lost components or complete computers when their system fails, as mine did today. It has to do with dual BIOS. And that is something I wish I would have realized right away at the beginning of troubleshooting instead of the end. So I suggest to everyone who has a motherboard with dual BIOS, make sure that this is your first step and not your last. But there's more information that I want to share as well with regard to a limitation that doesn't exist, although it is purported to, by the manufacturer. But we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, when my system failed, I went to turn it on and nothing happened. So I opened it up and I looked inside and I saw that the LEDs that show the postcodes showed a few values and then stopped. And nothing was happening. The CPU fan wasn't spinning up. Nothing else was happening. And I tried this many, many times to see if there were any changes in the behavior. And occasionally, it would freeze on a different postcode. It would toggle between 32 and 15 which are just different points in the earliest stages of starting up. But nevertheless, nothing was succeeding. And after many, many more tries, things changed again, and now the power supply was clicking off after a few seconds. As you can see here in my little demonstration, with the power supply suddenly clicking off. Now, this sent me down the wrong path, because it was not the power supply, but I didn't find out until much, much later, after I'd actually dismantled the power supply and checked it for any kind of failing capacitors or any other problems, and I was unable to find anything. And so I reassembled the power supply, put it back in, and started looking for other problems. And after a complete failure to find any other problems, just as I was about to give up, I suddenly remembered the reason that I bought this motherboard in the first place 11 years ago, and that was because it has dual BIOS. And when I suddenly remembered that, simply because I glanced at that switch, the switch I'm showing you now that toggles between the two copies of the BIOS, the two separate chips that store the BIOS. And as you can see, there are a pair of lights to show you which one is active. When I did that, suddenly the system worked perfectly once again. It started up and worked and everything was wonderful. Now, there's a little bit of a problem here that goes beyond this, and that is that at some point over the last 11 years when I was doing system maintenance or perhaps changing my video card or any other reason to be in there, I had accidentally changed the position on that little switch from the main BIOS to the backup BIOS, and it had been running off the backup BIOS for who knows how long. And now, due to whatever caused the BIOS to become corrupted, it was not the main BIOS that was corrupted, it was the backup BIOS. And as you can see here from the manual, it says very clearly in the last sentence of the what is dual BIOS section that I'm showing you here, users cannot update the backup BIOS manually. And this left me in a quandary because if my backup BIOS has been corrupted, I no longer have that fail-safe mechanism and I will be at the mercy of the main BIOS. And if it should fail also, then I'm gonna be in real trouble. So I thought I'm going to try to update the backup BIOS even though the manual says you can't. And it was so easy. All I had to do was start the system with the working BIOS, which in this case was the main one, and then launch the software for updating the BIOS. And first of all, all I had to do was save the existing BIOS by clicking the little button there to save BIOS to file. And then I flicked the switch on the motherboard to the broken BIOS. And because the system was already up and running, it doesn't matter which BIOS is being accessed because it's only in use during the initial power-up stage. And so now I'm switched to the broken one, the backup BIOS, and then I hit update BIOS. And I did so from the file that I just saved 
to copy the good one to the broken one. And it worked the first time. And then I rebooted the system using the backup BIOS, which was broken, and now it worked. And so that's it. This section of the owner's manual is completely wrong. You can update the backup BIOS by doing what I just said. Power up with the main one, switch to the backup, and then update it. And you're good. So that's the extra little tip. And the main tip for everyone who has a dual BIOS motherboard, if your system suddenly fails and it looks like it's your power supply, don't be too quick to switch power supplies. Try switching your BIOS first. Good luck.